Hey guys, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about up potting fruit trees and also kind of growing fruit trees in containers. So, if you're interested in this, this is really the video for you. Um, now, if, I want to try to make this as quick as possible. So, if you guys have questions, I'm on a tight schedule today, but if you guys have questions, post them down below and I'll get back to them. Um, today, we're actually going to be up potting a lot of fig trees. I have a number of them down here on the ground. I have about 20 or so of them that I'm going to be doing today. Um, we're going to be up potting them in different sizes here. Five gallon size container. We also have a, a 10 gallon size container here. And we also have some 15 gallon size containers that I may actually put them in. But for the most part, I think all fruit trees should be grown in at least a five gallon size pot. But even a five gallon size pot is very difficult. I would say the minimum is a 10 gallon. Inevitably, what I'll do is put them in here for about a year. And then next year, this time, I will come in here and I'll pot this into a 10 gallon size pot. But if you have a really nicely rooted out plant, let's say this one down here as an example, this one's really well rooted. Um, when I take this out of the pot, you'll be able to see that there's tons of roots down here, but also if you look at the top, and this is really the key. So if you come in here and you see that the wood is hardened up, this is a good sign that not only is the wood hardened up, but the roots are hardened up. And this is when you should be thinking about up potting your fir trees. If it's not hardened, don't even go for it because you're going you're gonna to have transplant shock. You're going to shock the plant. It's not going to be good. Uh, it's really important to do this at the right time of the day. Um, maybe you do this before rain. All in an effort to help reduce transplant shock. And that's really what we're going to focus on in this video. So, <clears throat> one of the things that just about every grower knows is that the soil is really, really important. And without a doubt, is the soil important um, and especially for containers. I really do believe that because if we put a really heavy soil in here that holds a lot of water, we put that in this pot, it's going to kind of replicate a swamp. And you don't want to do that. You want to have water that can freely drain out of these holes and also is going to drain really well and have lots of aeration in the pot. Uh, air is going to help the roots survive, prevent rot, and also just have your tree be a lot healthier. So for me, starting onto the right foot is extremely, extremely important. Without a doubt, is that is the most important thing to just pretty much everything in terms of growing. So if you're not getting a soil that's really porous, that's really well draining, a lot of people make their own mix. And you can make your own mix with things like perlite and peat moss and compost, vermiculite, rice holes. You can even have bark in there. Um, and that's going to add a lot of porosity is those things like vermiculite and perlite and bark and rice holes. Whereas the things like compost and worm castings and peat moss, that's going to hold a lot of that water. So if you're growing in just compost or you're growing in just peat moss, you better have a plant that really likes to have a lot of water. Otherwise, uh, I don't think it's really the best idea. And if we're also using really small plants like the one I showed you here, you know, this guy's not the largest tree. But if I were to put him into a pot with really well draining soil, it's not really going to matter. Because the soil is going to be so well draining, he's going to have enough oxygen that he's going to be able to do well. So starting on the right foot is, the, is key. What I use is a product called Just Natural Potting Soil. Well, actually, it's the, uh, it's the soil conditioner from Just Natural. And it's already pre-mixed for me. It creates a lot less work. It's 50% compost, 50% bark. And that's going to add about half of this. is going to be really well draining. And it's going to be really, really good for all my fruit trees that are around me on the patio here. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to up pot this guy into a five gallon. We'll start out with that. And what I'm going to do is taking the pot out of here, we're going to turn it upside down and not even tug on the tree itself. That's a huge mistake. Hopefully this comes out in one piece. It's well rooted. 
it's not breaking apart. We're gonna set this down for now. Put this pot to the side and then we're gonna add in our soil because we wanna plant this tree much higher. We don't wanna plant the trees too low. If you plant them too low, depending on what it is, it could be grafted. You could also create collar rot having too much water in the pot. Again, this creates too many issues. Uh, water is the source of all life. So if we can control the right amount of water, just by having the right soil, it's gonna help out a lot. It's gonna really make watering also very easy. Now what I'm doing here is I filled it up, I think to the level I want, but I'm gonna shake this out and that's gonna decrease the air pockets in here. And now it's synced. So I think I need to add maybe a little bit more. Who knows, let's put the pot in here. Get this to the level that we want. I'll take you guys off the tripod there in a moment. We're gonna add the soil around here. And that's pretty much it. We're just filling in the soil around the pot. We didn't disturb any of the roots the pot didn't break, right? When we took it out of the pot, none of the soil came loose. And then we're gonna give it another shake. And that's gonna also level out the soil. And what we can do from here is add in our amendments, add in some mulch if we wanted. Take you guys down and show you. Here's our finished product. Very, very simple. Also, you can see down in here, this is the just natural potting soil that I like to use. The soil conditioner, it's organic. It really is nutritious and also holds the right amount of water for me. But again, this is it. This is the finished product. This is ready to grow. Uh, this fig tree actually, believe it or not, will fully root itself out in this five gallon size pot and may even reach six feet tall by the end of the season. If you're really on the feeding, and that's a big thing we have to do, with our container fruit trees, guys, is that we have to feed them. This soil is not going to forever feed this plant. There's only so much soil, there's only so much distance the roots can travel for nutrients, and we can't add new soil because the soil is already existing here, and that's it. So I'm gonna put this one down, and now I'm going to mess with this guy here, and this is a tree, this is a fig tree that I don't like. This is a variety, uh, because we're trialing so many varieties here, over 200 varieties in Pennsylvania. This is one that I've decided I just don't like and I've tried to use it as rootstock for a number of years. And every year it seems to fail. Every graft I put onto this tree has failed and it just gets shorter and shorter every year. So I think uh, this guy is kind of a waste of my time. And we're gonna take this out of here. And I'm actually gonna throw this pot, or this tree I should say, this thing is gonna go in the compost pile. So I don't really care what I do to the roots. I don't care how this thing ends up looking right now. I'm just trying to get off all this soil here. Anything I can. Here looks like there's a peanut in here. <laughs> don't ask me how that happened. But we can take out of this, this excess soil that's really depleted it doesn't look too good um, this was a pot that was given to me and this was a tree that was given to me for somebody else and I really didn't like their mix I really didn't like really just how their trees perform so I think it's a good idea to start fresh with your potting soil but again inevitably your potting soil is going to look pretty bad no matter what it is you have to be feeding them, otherwise it's just not gonna work out. So I'm gonna put this one down here. And then I'm gonna fill it back up because uh, we're gonna add in not just one variety into this pot, we're gonna add in, I think, three. And we'll grow three different varieties in this one pot, three different fruit trees in this one pot. And I've also done this with um, 
other fruit trees besides figs as well. I've done this with apples, I've done this with pears, stone fruits. You can grow many fruit trees in the same pot. The thing you have to watch out for is you have to watch out for they have to have the same vigor or a similar vigor and they should be of the same species. So if you're doing apples as an example, they should all be apple trees and they should all be on the same rootstock that's going to give them the right amount of vigor. And it's a bit of a challenge to keep them pruned to the right size. You know, some is going some of them are going to be more vigorous than others. It's just just what's going to happen. But if you can control them with pruning, you know what you're doing? It's not a bad strategy. It's not a bad thing to do. Of course, if you have enough room, you have uh, a lot less trees than I do, then I probably wouldn't do this. All right, so we're just gonna shake this up again, and that's going to release those air pockets, remove those air pockets, I should say. And now I have to select which trees I wanna put in here. I guess we can go with this guy, this guy as well. All right, so we're gonna take them out one by one. Make sure we're not losing our labels because that's very important. Again, turning this upside down. Okay, that guy is now situated. Do the same thing over here. Now, you could actually cut the bag off if you really wanted to. If you didn't want to, if you didn't want to reuse these bags, because they only last so long anyway. You could actually cut them out. And that would also help reduce transplant shock. And that's really the name of the game here. We're not really doing anything crazy, anything new, you know. I certainly didn't come up with these techniques. But these are the good practices, in my opinion, of what you guys should be doing. All right, everything is in place now, and we just have to add in some extra soil. All right. So there you have it guys, so that is really it. And we could have also, if we really were careful, paying attention, we could send these branches out or at least turn the tree in the direction we want. So if this is growing out this way, we should have let it grow out this way, but there is a bud back here and it's not the worst thing in the world. We can always stake these up in the future. But that's it, give it a nice little shake as well. We need to get those air pockets out of here, add more soil. This is also the time, again, add fertilizer, add mulch, different types of micronutrients because our, our fruit trees guys really need all that stuff. And to be honest with you, um, the soil that we have here is really just not providing it. 
uh, for a long enough time. So, all right, guys, that was this video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. Um, you know, like this video as well. Please subscribe and then check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We have lots of content over there at Ross Ratty. Check out the blog that we have here as well, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. All that's in the description of this video. And if you're interested in seeing more of my fruit trees, follow along with the channel because we have a whole different types of different fruit trees that we are growing in containers or we have grown in containers. So check out the prior videos um, and look at all these fig trees, guys. Just a ton. So if you wanna have this success, I really do suggest following the steps that I just laid forth. We'll catch you guys for tomorrow's video. Take care, everyone.